So thank you everybody for uh, watching today's Coffee Break, where we're here to talk about uh, a new exciting management pack from Microsoft uh, for M365, or as was Office 365. Uh, before we kind of dig in, just to say, uh, we really would appreciate or be uh, you know, interested in getting everybody involved in the discussion. At any point, feel free to ask any questions uh, via the GoToWebinar Q&A, or of course, via Slack. There's a link here on screen and you would have been sent a link in join details as well for Slack and there's a channel uh, just for discussions on this topic. So without further ado, let's dig in uh, by introducing um, ourselves. So I'm Bruce Cullen, uh, I'm the Director of Products at Cookdown um, and it is with great pleasure that I introduce uh, my two speakers for today. Uh, with me I have Akash. That's Akash, you're the program manager for the SCOM uh, team, and obviously you're from, from Microsoft. It's great to have you with us today. And we also have Samir. Samir, you're a technical evangelist for Squared Up. Great to have you with us too. Um, so uh, between the three of us, we'll be taking you through today's contents. Don't worry, not too much for me this time. I'll be handing over to Akash really, really shortly. Um, but just to kind of set the stage, really, um, it's really important to understand why you might want to consider monitoring Microsoft 365, because ultimately, at the end of the day, it's SaaS. It's not on-prem uh, style infrastructure, which means that, as with all SaaS, there'll be some health status dashboard squirreled away somewhere that will tell you the state of whether M365 is up or down. And that's great. So why bother monitoring it? Well, the answer is really, really simple. Um, ultimately, your end users, the people working with um, Office and the M365 suite, um, are not at Microsoft. Um, so while uh, the service itself may be up, there may be issues in between your end users and Microsoft's services that prevent them from actually being able to access things. Uh, if you're thinking of synthetic transaction monitoring, you'll be along the right lines. Um, the other thing it's worth saying on the M365 MP is there is already a version um, of the uh, M365 F MP, originally called the Office 365 MP, uh, and that is a really good place to bring in um, you, Akash. Um, I'm going to now um, effectively hand over to Akash, who's going to take uh, take you through the vast majority of the content for today, um, starting with the, the, the journey from the old version of the Office 365 MP to the new one. So Akash, uh, are you able to speak? Can we hear you okay? Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's try that. Perfect. Good to have you with us. So, without further ado, we'll let hand over to you. Thank you. Uh, hey, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening from uh, wherever you're located from. Uh, it's, it's pretty late here, but but I'm uh, very glad to uh, share this uh, opportunity with with Cookdown Squared of folks on presenting uh, the new management pack Microsoft is planning. From, from the SCOM product group. Uh, we, before we go ahead and talk about the new management pack, we just want to talk, uh, just want to mention saying that the management pack, management pack to monitor of 65 already exists. It was released a couple of years ago, a little more than a couple of years ago. Mainly it was intended to go ahead and get all the, uh, you know, message center alerts, message center, uh, you know, notifications that is raised in each and everyone's of 65 tenant and and that message center uh, relays or, or converts into an alert in scom uh, uh, ops console however uh, one of the key uh, you know key asks from all the customers was to go ahead and monitor the workloads uh, basically the exchange sharepoint and and skype for business or, or right now it's teams right <clears throat> how is how are these workloads performing uh, what are the latencies observed by customers uh, can we do anything better to uh, you know connect to 365 is there a better route uh, that that we can take from our data center from our uh, 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 private network into 365 data center these were some of the key questions that that customers always asked and uh, we wanted to go ahead and get into that in in the new management pack also some of the feedback that we have got recently, and, and this has been a lingering uh, uh, issue from quite some time, is that the message center, the issues reported in message center would create humongous or sometimes false alerts in uh, SCOM. 
and uh, and it creates it's, it's a lot of noise for scom admins they're not able to uh, understand why these alerts are popping up and, and neither these alerts are actionable so we want to go we've heard that and uh, we'll talk about how we are addressing it and and also as i mentioned earlier there is there is no way for a scom admin to understand what is the network performance with 365 whether is there any latency this is the route taken to 365 data center the optimal one right so those were some of the feedback that we've received over the past couple of years and at the same time there have been uh, a lot of mps uh, available in the market uh, some of them by microsoft community some of them by uh, scom partners or vendors but at the same time we being from microsoft would want to go ahead and provide management pack for a workload that is owned by Microsoft, right? M365 that is. So we've gone ahead and uh, uh, heard you folks, and now we have, uh, want to talk about what are some of the key features in the management pack uh, that we are coming up with in the next couple of months. Bruce, on to the next slide, please. Right. Uh, okay, uh, just to recap, some of the customer asks are to monitor all, uh, you know, to monitor the M365 performance from multiple workloads or, sorry, from multiple uh, endpoints. Uh, any M365 customer, uh, you know, beat any MNCs, uh, they are having global footprint. They have employees sitting across the globe and they would want to know how is the performance from each of those geo endpoints right uh, supposing a customer who's based out of uh, us but its employees are situated uh, across anz or asia they would want to know how is the performance in these regions right uh, that is one of the major asks uh, the second most important ask is with with the scom environment itself we have Two personas here when one is scom admins who are monitoring different applications who know how to handle alerts who know how to go ahead and relay the information to application owners but over here with 365 we have a separate set of users or admins m365 admins it could be exchange admin sharepoint admin teams admin but at the end of the day these are two separate worlds scom which is an on-premise uh, product they work in in uh, uh, you know completely different silos and M365 in, in it's in a separate silo. So how do we go about bringing these these two different teams together and making sure when you go ahead and set up this management pack, it should be a seamless effort. Uh, and at the same time, the M365 admins should have access to the alerts or or to the data that is being captured by SCOM, right? So we want to go ahead and address that. And, and that's been a constant ask from customers. And again, as I mentioned, the management pack, the existing management pack had a lot of alerts being raised from message center. So we want to make sure, or we want to give an option to the end users to stop those alerts. Uh, we've also talked about the network connectivity. What are the best routes available? And at the same time, um, SCOM dashboards have always been, uh, uh, have had a native look and feel. We want to go ahead and provide dashboards on H5, our, our web console, and pro, you know provide the best-in-class dashboards with uh, the management pack, right? Uh, and at the same time, M365 comes with a lot of uh, you know conditions and, and with a lot of uh, authentication, uh, con uh, you know uh, what do you say prerequisites. Uh, SCOM, as I mentioned, is, is an on-premise product. It works on NTLM. It works on Kerberos. Whereas M365, it makes use of uh, client credentials, certificates, modern authentication, uh, single sign-on and whatnot, right? So we want to make sure all these key or uh, all these new type of authentication is being handled from the SCOM side, right? Uh, and not able to compromise any of these, uh, you know, credentials. So we want to provide secure setup with M365 on SCOM, right? And Imagine we get few alerts from Exchange or from SharePoint, right? Saying that the uh, emails are slow, or or you know the calendar uh, uh, availability is not uh, provided or or is not available, right? That is probably one of those alerts, right? What 
what can a SCOM admin do with those alerts, right? We want to go ahead and provide actionable outcomes for these alerts, right? And at the same time, uh, NC65, you know, you, uh, you know, from an organization standpoint, they go ahead and procure all the licenses at the beginning of a year or a beginning of a three-year contract. We would not know how these licenses are being assigned on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. So one of the critical asks was to go ahead and monitor the licenses. How much of licenses are being used? How many are available? Are we hitting any threshold? So we want to go ahead and cater to that as well. Right. So these were some of the common customer asks, and now we want to go ahead and talk about the key features in the, the new management pack. First and foremost, secure setup. As I mentioned, uh, we want to go ahead and provide the modern authentication of the way of adding a subscription or a tenant into SCOM admin. Uh, the credentials that we want to go ahead and uh, make use of is either through client secret or using certificates. We go ahead and register an app which will act on behalf of SCOM and make any kind of uh, transactions or authentication. And the app can be registered with two options. One is through client secret which is the app ID and client secret. And the second one is with the help of app ID and certificate, right? So this, these are the two ways where you can go ahead and register the app, which will act on behalf of SCOM in M365 world. Uh, secondly, watch a note is the concept where you go ahead and make use of a SCOM agent, be it a server or a desktop, and make transactions from these agents right transactions like making uh, uh, you know sending emails uh, creating a chat uh, or, or rather sending a message uploading sharepoint files browsing to sharepoint site or browsing to off 65 login page or portal right all of these transactions are performed and are called synthetic transaction they are performed on watcher nodes these watcher nodes we do not want a lot of intervention from the scom admin because as I mentioned, SCOM admin would not be aware of all these minute nitty gritties of M365 world. So we want to make it make the setup of watch and node as easy and as seamless as possible. So that is something that we have, uh, uh, want to address in this management pack. And as I mentioned, the synthetic transactions, some of them are exchange emails, log on latency. Uh, we want to go ahead and see at, uh, you know how long it takes to browse to SharePoint sites, upload and download files. Uh, teams, we want to go ahead and check what is the uh, reorder ratio, uh, packet loss, uh, the jitter on on how the call quality is, right? And also, we want to make sure that the dashboards, which are uh, uh, at the which which be created with the management pack, will have location tagging of these watcher nodes, right? In this demo, uh, in, in the latter half of our uh, session, we showcase some of the way the watcher node can be tagged to a specific location and how it would display on a map, on a heat map, right? Which will in turn show us the performance or, or you know, the state of those watcher nodes. Uh, the transactions or all the type of operations that are performed in this management pack would be done with the help of graph api uh, we'll talk about what permissions are required on the graph api as well uh, again we want to make sure that scom can help in understanding the performance metrics of a hybrid environment mainly on the exchange side how long does it take from an email which is sent from on-premise uh, take to reach the mailbox of an online Mail, uh, you know online uh, user right so and vice versa so we want to make sure that we can go ahead and monitor the performance and and the health of, of the exchange hybrid uh, and lastly as i mentioned we have network monitoring and license monitoring with this new management pack and uh, teams call quality as i talked about the jitter the packet loss ratio uh, you know the uh, if there is any uh, uh, you know what do you say reordering of packets how much of percentage of, of a call is being reordered, the packet being reordered. So we monitor all of that and present it on our dashboards. Okay, so we'll talk about 
the permissions required firstly before we uh, go ahead and talk about the seamless uh, watch and note setup so some of the watch and note uh, sorry some of the graph api permissions required uh, would be on this uh, and we'll be using the application permissions to set up the app registration uh, we need to send emails read emails of course this will be done in a very uh, you know in, in a dedicated mailbox so uh, we would not need to worry about the permissions or or you know the authentication being uh, misused uh, the permission being misused sorry uh, we'll also go ahead and upload sharepoint files and download so we'll make use of files.rewrite all we talk about enlisting sharepoint sites while uh, you know setting up the watch node hence the sites.read.all uh, channel for posting a message in a channel or for uh, uploading files in a channel uh, group member.read as a to it requires on on the teams monitoring these right uh, so these are some of the graph api permissions that are required to set up this management pack and again all of this will be seamless when you go ahead and set up the subscription okay so if you can go to the next slide bruce oh so it's demo time um, if i make you presenter cash um uh, i wish you missed out on two slides here if i'm not wrong let's say again sorry i believe we skipped a few slides Ooh, the we... one with the watch or not or is it on oh, the that's, that's okay. next should i go there first yeah, uh, I mean, all right, let's let's switch to the demo. I will go ahead and uh, showcase how the new watch and note setup looks like and uh, Sure, and just and then, while you're right. um, sort of sharing your screen and, and stuff. I have a, a question that's come in from an attendee um, Which is uh, worth sort of addressing now. So the question is essentially um, is the uh, uh, upgrade and in place one for the management pack Do they need to remove the old office 365 MP before importing the new one? Good question. Uh, one thing which I forgot to mention is that we are rebranding this management pack to M365, right, from our old of 65. Mm -hmm. So our upgrade scenarios would not be working. We will need to go ahead and get rid of the old one and set up a new one. Makes sense. Perfect. Right. And uh, there was another question on Azure Active Directory Authentication uh, Monitoring AAD. Uh, Sean, thanks for the question. We are looking into having a management pack for the same, but that would not be accommodated in our uh, management pack for N365 for now. Mm. Makes sense. There was one other question that came in via the uh, the go to webinar chat, but you answered it, and it was on the permissions essentially for uh, Graph API. So uh, all good there. So there are no other questions I'm aware of. So um, let's carry on. Be really good to see how it, where, how it looks. Sure. So uh, the setup is pretty straightforward. You go ahead and, and import the management pack on, on the left hand side. You will see the man Microsoft 365 uh, tab added. And if you notice, it's the same as of 65 uh, look and feel. But we have added another uh, option, UI option here for watch and note. First and foremost, let me run through the add subscription piece, which is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, you go ahead and add the subscription. You can go and choose either Azure Service Principal or Custom One. And we plan to add another option here. Whether you want to go ahead and use App ID Secret or App ID Certificate, right? Um, the work is still in progress. Uh, a quick heads up on this management pack. We plan to release this in a couple of months or probably next month. So the work is in progress and final start, uh, you know, we are going through some of the final touches on this. Okay, uh, pretty straightforward here. You go ahead and add, uh, you know, the name, let's say, give me a moment, please. Let me go ahead and uh, take the name. Click on create, it'll ask me for credentials, which was uh, previously asked as well. This will be the credentials which the M365 admin needs to provide or key in when you know this com admin is setting up. This will be a one-time activity. And once that is done, the SPN is created, the permissions are added automatically. You don't need any intervention by browsing to the Azure AD Authentication Center. And you just go ahead and click on next and add subscription. And when we go to the 
when we go to the admin center, Azure uh, admin center, hold on. Uh, the, the app would be registered and uh, you will see the uh, permissions associated to it as well. I'm sorry, you were saying something, Bruce? No, I was just going to say that's a really nice sort of setup experience. Um, hmm. Yeah, so this is just one of the applications that I had created previously and all the permissions are already added. Right. So that is done. And as I mentioned, this is a one time activity. And once it is done, you click on finish. You come back here, you click on sky papers and you will see whether you can edit or remove subscription. Now, the next step is you go ahead and click on add watch note. So we provide the flexibility of adding watch note on an existing SCOM agent. Right now, in my environment, I have two agents. One is a non-working, which is actually shut down, but it's enlisted as an agent. And the other one is uh, 187, which is a functioning one. Right, I click on, I choose the agent, and I, it'll ask me which subscription do I want to go ahead and monitor. So I choose the second one, Sky Papers. And here it'll ask me what type of uh, uh, you know prerequisites I need to install. Again, all of this is documented in our uh, management pack documentation. The first checkbox is when you want to go ahead and monitor hybrid exchange. Right, it goes ahead and install the EWS prerequisites, which is needed. And the second one is for Teams network assessment, where I would want to monitor the packet loss ratio, uh, you know, the jitter and all of it, which I spoke to earlier. And then you can choose which account you you can use to install these prerequisites on the agent. Right. Uh, so, the, yeah, so the installation of those prerequisites is part of this wizard as well, correct? Exactly. Exactly. That's really nice. So on the next, I'm sorry, Bruce. On the next step, when we click on uh, when we go to the next step, the prerequisites is automatically checked. So some of the prerequisites are PowerShell 5, the .NET 4.7, identity client to do the perform, you know, to, to perform authentication. Then the EWS, as I mentioned, for hybrid. If you go ahead and uncheck this, you know, the prerequisite for EWS is not checked. I'm sorry, it's a bit slow. So oh, I'm sorry, it got checked again. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Let's go ahead with the existing process. Uh, you had a question, Bruce? There are a few questions in the chat. Let me just dig them up really quickly. Um, so the first one we've answered, which is uh, when can we download it? You've answered that one already. Um, the next one is um, with the permissions you mentioned, which I'm assuming is referring to the Graph API permissions. Uh, can you send as any user is the question. Uh, I'm sorry, can I send what? Uh, the, the question is, with those permissions, you can send as any user. Is that true? That is partially true. Uh, and we have few, uh, you know, uh, checks in place on how to prevent that. So probably they'll take that at the end of our uh, session. Okay, sounds good. Um, let's see, what else have we got? Uh, is this MP compatible with SCOM 2016 or only for 2019? We are, uh, you know, targeting this for both versions of SCOM because both are in, in market. But yeah, but so the bug fixes that we carry forward as we take this management back forward is, is will be with 2019. Makes sense. Makes sense. Perfect. Uh, and then the next one uh, is when you're setting up a watcher. Does that watcher the watches that we're setting up are they SCOM management servers or can it be any any anything that has the SCOM agent on it? As of now, we are piggy banking piggy banking on the agent. So if we have agents or wherever we have agents, we can use them as watching mode and not the SCOM servers. Okay, uh, so does that mean a watcher cannot be a SCOM server or could be a SCOM server or any anything else with the agent on? Just it to be can fair. only be an agent and not a SCOM server. Perfect, makes sense. I guess you wouldn't want to put extra load on the SCOM servers. Uh, yeah. Final question, I think, though I'll have to quickly look down the list again. Is this compatible with SCOM 2012 R2? I, I'm sorry, Bruce, I zoned out. Can you repeat? That's okay. Um, is the is this compatible, this MP compatible with 2012 R2? Uh, we have not tested this. Um, we, uh, we do not want to target 2012 R2, but again, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take that as a request if that is some 
you know if, if your customers are still using 2012 r2 uh, we will uh, you know we'll get back to you on that but as of now we are targeting only 2016 and 2019 okay i think that's all the questions for now i'll uh, i'll have a little look while you, while you carry on sure thank you and moving forward when i click on next uh, it'll ask me uh, you know the urls uh, the you know the endpoint url which i want to connect on the mc65 side uh, for me to go ahead and authenticate and test connection the reason we want to expose this or provided this is so that it can you know a user can go ahead and change the endpoint for example, the GCC high, uh, which is not an, a commercial tenant, they have their own endpoint. So they can go ahead and change this as per the requirement. And imagine if they've gone and changed it or kept it as it is, I can always test the connection. What this test does is, it will go ahead and check the connectivity from the watcher node to the A365, okay? So I'm gonna click on test uh, again, keep in mind this is a demo this will fail the reason is uh i this is a new setup and uh, i have something missing in the back end so it's gonna fail right however uh, I'll, I'll run you through a few screenshots which have a test connection and i want to show how uh, the completion of a successful m watch and note setup looks like nevertheless nevertheless you can still proceed and you can go ahead and check or uncheck which watch uh, which type of exchange monitoring you want to go ahead and do in my case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, key in uh, the mailbox, which I want to use for uh, sending and receiving emails. In, the, in my case, I'll use both as one mailbox. And then if I have Exchange hybrid setup, I can go ahead and you know, provide the URL for my Exchange server. In my case, I, I, I do not have an Exchange mailbox for now. So I'm going to click on Next and then i can choose which sharepoint site i can go ahead and you know monitor with regards to downloading and uploading files and uh, let me go with the root sharepoint and then i click on next here i'm going to choose my contour so teams where uh, the channel will get uh, will have to be pre-created this channel will be used for us to go ahead and post a message which is still in works or it will go ahead and upload and uh, download a file on this channel right and at the same time network box also can be unchecked and checked right this will help us uh, in measuring the login and ping times for our network performance and lastly with regards to uh, license uh, that the warning message was because of the test connection which actually failed previously uh, here you get to go ahead and provide an option of any specific license that you want to monitor for now you can monitor one watch and node or rather you can monitor one set of license one a SKU with one watch and node we want to go ahead and add the flexibility of watching uh, sorry of monitoring multiple SKUs with one watch and node right in the G, in the first version, it will be one watch node mapped to one SKU. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say standard license, which is one of the SKUs of uh, uh, you know M65 licenses. And then this is something which we have uh, you know worked extensively and wanted to call out here. Supposing uh, one of uh, you know the watch node, the one that I'm adding, 187. If you note the name on the top here 187 is the name of the agent i'm supposing this agent is located in redmond so i go ahead and give a friendly name as redmond server this is my friendly name but then since i know it is located in redmond i'm going to go ahead and provide the location as redmond and i'm going to go ahead and look up so this will pull up the you know exact location of the name that i enter here it could be Redmond, it could be exact street name, it could be exact house name, right? So it is up to the end user on how accurate they want the location to be, right? So once I go ahead and look up, it will pull up the exact location and then I can go ahead and click on next and finish, okay? The reason uh, why we have the flexibility of providing the exact, uh, you know, location of, uh, of a specific watch and note, we'll be talking about it in a few minutes right so now the watch and note is set up let's assume it is set up i'm sorry this broke today 
unfortunately i don't have the latest build and once it is set up you will see all the types of uh, you know dashboards displayed here under monitoring on the left hand side microsoft 365 we have a license dashboard teams networking dashboard then we have licensing views what is the account and all of it then we have uh, mail flows exchange 365 vice versa and we have performance views right and then we have sharepoint and finally we have teams right so we look forward to your feedback on how we can optimize the look and feel or optimize the dashboards i also want to showcase how the dashboards would look from the h5 standpoint right so i just want to switch over to the presentation and then come back to the h5 for now sure so is now a good place to come back to slides yeah all right let me make myself presenter again and while i'm doing so uh let me just whip through there are a bunch of other questions um so is proxy supported with the mp is the next one yes we plan to go ahead and make sure the scom is able to go ahead and monitor m65 on a proxy environment the test is in progress uh and yes we plan to add that okay um and is does the scom agent itself that's set up as a watcher need direct internet connectivity or is the connection uh passed through the management server so again there are a couple of scenarios here the management server itself is behind a proxy or the agent could be behind a proxy right the first uh you know the first scenario where we will where we will encounter proxy is on the management server so that's where we are testing right now agent sitting behind the proxy is pretty straightforward it's for an example a server or a desktop which is using proxy at the end of the day we will have few urls that needs to be whitelisted and if those urls are whitelisted from that agent we should be good to uh, function from uh, you know from that environment so that is how we are looking at and, and the test is in progress makes sense okay uh next question then uh, i'm going to assume that scom gateways are good targets for this mp2 is the question um so i'm assuming this is in relation to setting up watches can basically gateways be set up as watches yes uh, uh i'm sorry the gateways to be used as watchers um uh, again that's a very interesting scenario uh we would want to take a look into that uh, i do not have uh, uh, the right answer for now but yes, we plan to go ahead and cater to the environment, which are agents sitting behind a gateway, but using gateways as the watcher node, that is something that needs to be explored. So thank you for bringing that up. It's a good question. I'm going to dip back into questions later and carry on with the slides. Now, hopefully you're seeing them. Um, so uh, I'll go through the next set of slides. Sure. So it's the same thing. It's a recap for now, which will, uh, uh, you know, which will talk about what we show on, which we showed on the demo. So I'll run it through uh, what we did. We went ahead and added subscription, and then we clicked on watch a note. Uh, we click on add watch a note, and it takes us and it brings up the wizard watch a note setup wizard. Please click on next, uh, Bruce. And here we choose, uh, you know, the subscription that we want to monitor, and then we click on next. Uh, once we choose the watcher node that needs to be set up, as I said, only agents can be used as watcher nodes. Uh, we go ahead and choose what type of monitoring that needs to be done on the watcher node for hybrid or for teams or, or both or none. And then we choose the account with, that we want to go ahead and set up to install those prereqs. And then we click next. Here we go ahead and uh, it, it automatically checks the prereqs. If it is not there, it will, you know, you have the option of clicking on install prereqs and installing those prerequis uh, prerequisites. Uh, you also have error logging on this watch node in case you encounter any error, click on next. So once that is done, you have the flexibility of changing the watch node, uh, sorry, the, the 365 endpoint. As I mentioned, GCC high or any non-commercial tenant, we have not text, uh, tested with uh, uh, all the other, there are about four to five types of tenants. Uh, China, Germany, then GCC High commercial. We have tested only with uh, commercial for now, and GCC High is it works. So mm -hmm. ideally, work for those two environments. And testing connection, as I mentioned, it will go ahead and 
get a SKU. It will make a successful authentication and uh, for for testing, it will get a SKU. And if it gets a SKU, it will go ahead and mark it as green. So then you go ahead and click on next. You go ahead and set up exchange, hybrid, or uh, online, uh, both or one. Uh, of course, you need to have online first, and then the hybrid can be monitored. So you can choose different mailboxes for sending and receiving. Uh, once that is done, you click on next. And you can choose the SharePoint sites, as I talked about, uh, as I showed you as well. You choose a SharePoint library for you to go ahead and upload and download files. And just to keep you guys aware that the upload and the download files are one MB files, which will be uploaded and downloaded and immediately deleted. You can see all those files in the recycle bin as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. and once that is done, uh, once the SharePoint, uh, one thing that I need to call out here is we do not have a separate OneDrive monitoring. The reason is at the end of the day, OneDrive and SharePoint are technically same. They are star, you know, at the rate, sorry, they are tenant.sharepoint.com. So if you think, uh, again, you can let me know the chat. If you think OneDrive needs to be separated out into a, another branch, let me know. And, and let me know the reason that why you think it needs to be separated out. We can consider that. But as of now, SharePoint and OneDrive are considered as one. Mm -hmm. Interesting point. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, Teams, as I talked about, whether when you want to monitor Teams, you go ahead and provide the Teams channel name and the Teams name. And uh, you also have the option of uh, choosing network monitoring or not. And finally, the licensing and location. Right? As I talked about, you can give a friendly name on the first column and on the second one you go ahead and provide a street name it, it looks or you know it uh, hooks up into bing maps sorry azure maps and you can go ahead and be as specific as possible or as vague as possible it all depends on you and the reason we want to go ahead and and uh, do the location tagging is i'm going to show it on my screen right now mm, i'm very interested to find out the answer to that cool so that's it. This is a summary and then we can switch over to my desktop. Sounds good. OK, let me give you back presenter and then I will go through the questions again. There are a few more. Do do do. What have we got? Oh, can you monitor some VIP mailboxes and teams in particular? That's a very uh, interesting ask, Pascal. Uh, we want to go ahead and take that as probably our upcoming features monitoring specific mailboxes this we have come across few uh, you know few times but we just want to see uh, uh, you know what what makes someone monitor a specific mailbox i understand it's a kind of important person in all of it but uh, is there any other reason other than you know making sure that the mailbox is up and running for that vip person yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because presumably you'd need to sort of like um, have permissions to log in as that person to do that. Exactly. Um, so there's potentially drawbacks to that approach as well. And um, yes. the next question is, how many service accounts are needed? So ideally, we need one service account. Uh, when you say service account, I, uh, the question would be more from the SCOM side or from the N365 side. So if it is from the SCOM side, it would be just one account. You can go ahead and just use the SCOM service account. Or if you're talking about from, talking about from the N365, you can just use one single mailbox for SharePoint or uh, sorry for Teams and for uh, Exchange. And uh, the first subscription setup needs to be done with the help of an Azure admin or from a or or, or the N365 global admin. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's a bit small on that screen. Uh, the old MP resulted in alert storms from the message center. Can you show us or explain to us how the new MP changes this? Good question. Uh, I missed the answering or, you know, I missed talking about this. So in this new MP, uh, we have not actually fixed that specific issue because it is talking to the APIs, uh, you know, the service com APIs of 365. Uh, again, that requires a bit of, uh, you know, uh, deep diving into 365 and we would need the uh, 365 product group as well to uh, you know to look into that but for now what we are doing this management pack is we are allowing the scom admin to you know uh, you know uncheck or check 
the option or rather uh, you know the scrum admin has the option to choose if an alert needs to be generated from message center or not if mm. they don't want to they can always uncheck it and uh, you know make use of actual 365 monitoring but if they rely on api and message center they can always check that box however in the following versions of uh, n 365 admin pack we want to go ahead and fix that train of uh, connection makes sense i mean ultimately I, I, maybe there are use cases i'm not aware of but um unless you can take action based on those alerts creating an alert for something that's informational that you can't take action on would seem sort of counterintuitive to me um yeah. all right we'll stop with the questions there and I'll, I'll, we'll hand back to you and i'll go back to questions in a minute sure uh now this is the 365 uh, h5 dashboards and, and the reason I was emphasizing on the location tagging is because on the first screen, which is called maps here, again, the work is in progress. We are gonna go ahead and change the naming over here on the left-hand side. So on the first overview dashboard, we will see all the watch notes which are located across the world. And we can see you know, the health of it. You can zoom in and notice that this actually has two watch notes. 140 and uh, the other 138 uh, each of them are red the reason is the licensing monitoring is not working as expected and hence it is red however the other three workloads are green right uh, supposing a global company has watch nodes across the world you will see those location or you know those watch node being mapped to a specific location as you do it on the watch node right that was the reason we have the location set up and once you have gone through the overview, then we can switch to some of the Microsoft monitoring, which is uh, 365 availability, then the performance and the licenses. Here you get to go ahead and choose all, uh, you know, all the type of transaction, whether Teams or uh, SharePoint. Hold on, this, this doesn't look right. Let me refresh. uh this doesn't look right something has changed here or maybe there are no alerts on this machine which is pretty which is hmm. quite uh you know which is quite unbelievable uh usually it shows a few alerts here uh you know based on what type of workload the alerts are being generated it shows up in the ball in the following box and the top graph will show the alerts on the top you know the number of alerts with the graph if for example sharepoint has five alerts then there'll be a bar graph indicating five and then teams if it has a couple of alerts there'll be a bar graph uh, indicating the couple of alerts and at the bottom you will see the details of those alerts right unfortunately it's been cleaned up i don't know why it's been cleaned up it was there yesterday now moving forward that from overview i go to exchange mail flow this will show us the latency that is uh, you know taken for mailboxes uh, to send and receive emails uh, the first one is online only 365 to 365 then we have hybrid uh, 365 to exchange and vice versa exchange to 365 right so we can go ahead and define a threshold where supposing it crosses the threshold you will be alerted and you can also go ahead and choose a specific type of workload as well and again, if you have the flexibility of switching between the watch node, that was for a specific watch node, and this is the other one. And supposing you have different location setup, you can again change the location as well. Okay. And then we move to network monitoring, where we have the connection timeout to portal.office, outlook.365, then uh, you know the the you know the CDN of 365 mailbox. Then we have the high availability mailbox, uh, sorry, high availability exchange model, right? So these are the different, uh, what do you say, uh, graphs over here. Again, the end user has the option of choosing watch and node, locations, and type of transaction. Mm -hmm. And lastly, for SharePoint, uh, I don't want to get into Teams. The reason is it's still working in progress. Uh, for SharePoint, you have the latency, you have the SharePoint upload and download and then uh, yeah the connection and the total time right uh, mm -hmm. same 
flexible options you can choose all or just choose download time upload time and uh, you know you can go ahead and switch between uh, watch notes location and all right mm, that's so, really cool right and so these are some of the h5 uh, you know related uh, dashboards that we have for m65 still work in progress again we're looking to deliver it next month hopefully soon sooner and uh, your feedback would be very much welcome on on the slack channels uh bruce we can switch over to your uh, presentation sure um just before we go there i'm um, really cool to see this um there are a few more questions uh can you monitor m365 ut license utilization like you can with the nice mps i think that was answered earlier um, but it might be worth talking about some of the limitations as per the number of license types per watcher node. There's some yeah. questions around that too. Yeah, so as I mentioned, for now, we can monitor one SKU from one watcher node. Again, if uh, if you have multiple agents and if you have multiple watcher nodes, you can use uh, all these watcher nodes for different SKUs, but we want to reduce that uh, overhead. We want to make sure uh, a single watch note can monitor multiple SKUs. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, next one, uh, Exchange Hybrid do not allow local mailbox licensing wise. Uh, so is it possible to, uh, to have only a sender and not a receiver? Uh, hold on, Exchange Hybrid do not allow local mailbox. I'm not sure what does local mailbox mean. So maybe I need a little bit of yeah, clarity on that. Yeah, Pascal, if you could provide more clarity, that would be great. Uh, let's see, there are loads of questions. This is great. Uh, during the setup process, uh, are the tests really being performed from the identified watcher nodes or from uh, from the MS management server, presumably, uh, which the console is connected to? Hold on, hold on, I'm just taking a look. Uh, who was that question from, Bruce? Uh, that question was from Larry in the GoToWebinar chat. There are quite a few, though, <laughs> as you can see. I'm not sure if I follow. Would you like me to uh, restate the question? Yeah, could, could you put it on the same chat as the Slack? Because I don't follow the, the verbal mm, Hopefully someone behind the scenes can do that. Um, Maybe this is a good point to jump from questions. Uh, what we'll do then is we'll move on. So one of the questions which I've answered uh, in the GoToWebinar um, chat is, will there be a squad up dashboard pack for this? So my next slide is going to answer that, which is essentially yes. And this is where I'm going to bring in uh, Samir, who is a technical evangelist for Squared Up, who has a, a demo of the very same thing. So Samir, I'm going to make you presenter now and uh, fire away. Be good to see how this looks too. Cool. Thank you. So yeah, so we have a we have a dashboard of um, that we have made here. So um, Akash was actually uh, kind enough to provide with uh, a private preview of this management pack to us earlier. So we had a little bit of time to play around with it, and um, you know, just basically we bought a dashboard pack for it. Um, so for people who are new to Squared Up. Uh, dashboard pack is basically a set of pre-built dashboards that you can uh, simply install with a, with a single click um, and they are fully customizable so if you don't like anything on the dashboard if you want to modify anything change the scope or add new visualizations remove some um, then you can basically uh, do anything with that dashboard so you can also treat it as a template um, so you don't have to start from scratch basically um, uh, so this particular dashboard pack here has um, will import a folder under which it has two dashboards. Um, the reason it has two dashboards is I like to separate my um, overview status from uh, performance because uh, the overview is something like I, this, something is wrong right now. It's probably something that needs action immediately. So, so for example, this one here, the watcher health. So I can immediately see that there's something wrong with it the performance of it maybe i can drill down into it when i uh, tr you know start to troubleshoot the problem um, and we also have the performance one here which i'll switch over to in a minute uh, so what you see here on the overview dashboard is of course all the uh, alerts that i'm getting so as <laughs> as what we were discussing is like so we haven't unchecked the um, show us alerts from message center 
uh, box uh, so that we have uh, all the alerts coming in from the message center here. So as you can see, they are quite a lot. Um, then you've also got the overall set of your subscription, of course. Uh, you've got your uh, you've got alerts if they're coming from your uh, watchers, the individual watches that you've configured, and of course some uh, monitors that this management tag is uh, is putting on those watchers, basically, right? You can, of course, like any squared up dashboard, you can drill down into anything. Um, so, for example, I drill down into this watcher right here. It will drop me down into a perspective. And this, this, this metrics you see here are all coming from the management pack and they are scoped to this particular uh, watcher. So if you switch over to a different watcher, you will see the same metric, but of course, different, uh, different values here. You can uh, drill down into any of these performance charts. So if I click on to that, um, you see a focused view of that performance chart. You can also zoom into specific uh, dates and times if you want. You can export this um, uh, into Excel and you can share it around. Um, once you have also made the dashboard, by the way, you have also the option to share it with open access. So you will just simply switch this button on here and you will have a link that will make an open access dashboard, which can be shared freely with anyone, even uh, if they don't have access to Squared Up. And the other one I have here is the performance dashboard. Again, all of this is very high level, bird's eye view, um, overview of the uh, watchers I have. Uh, this is categorized by the services that we are monitoring. Uh, the SharePoint one, the Teams one, uh, I see jitter and uh, reorder ratio and so on, what uh, Akash was uh, Akash mentioned earlier. Uh, again, you can drill down into any of this. So I have three watchers. Uh, the reason this one does not show anything is if I haven't configured it properly, but the other two are working. So again, I can click onto any of this, uh, see the performance chart, export this chart, uh, set a custom time, uh, you know, time, you know, time uh, range and whatever. Um, speaking of perspectives, if I go back to perspective real quick, uh, let's go in this. Right, so in Squared Up, you also have, um, like I said, so you have perspective where you can see uh, the health of your object or the performance of, of, um, of your object that you've drilled down into from multiple sources. Right, so in the same dashboard here, you have everything that is relevant to your uh, M365 Watcher uh, personality of your uh, of your server, along with the Windows Server personality and so on. Right, so if you have a SQL Server maybe installed on the server, you can also have uh, a SQL perspective. So you can basically correlate the data from uh, different sources and see what, uh, which will ultimately aid you in your uh, troubleshooting if there's any. Um, so this is the dashboard pack we have currently, of course, uh, this is still work in progress. So the, the management pack hasn't been published yet. So if there are any changes to it, if uh, Microsoft decides to, uh, you know, change the classes maybe or add an extra, extra few classes, then we can also accommodate that in the dashboard. And it will also be published along with the um, along with Microsoft management pack. Perfect. Thank you, Samir. Awesome. So um, I'm going to take back screen unless uh, there's anything else to show, Samir. Nope, that's that's all. Unless there are any questions. Perfect. We'll go through questions. There are there are quite a few of them <laughs> uh, on loads of things. So uh, before we kind of dig into questions one more time, um, just to kind of say um, where can where can attendees go to get the MP. Um, so the MP itself, as Akash mentioned earlier, is, is not yet available and uh, the Microsoft team are working frantically to make this available uh, in a month or so's time. Um, if you want to be the first to get your hands on it when it when it drops, um, the two places to look uh, look for an update are the System Center Twitter, uh, which is at MS underscore System Center. And of course, the uh, SCOM team's product, uh, product team's blog, essentially, um, where it will be published or an announcement will be published when it's available. And the Squared Up dashboards uh, will be published shortly after the MP is released, uh, where there are changes, because obviously it's a, 
what we're looking at today is, is uh, pre-release code. Uh, we'll have to potentially change some of what's in the dashboard before publishing. Um, so if you're interested, keep an eye on those places. And in general, I'd recommend it because that's where all the SCON product team use goes. Um, so before we go back into Q&A, a few final things uh, to, to go through. Just a quick mention um, from our sponsors. So our sponsors are Squared Up. Um, Squared Up, obviously, as you will have seen from Samir, uh, make dashboarding. Uh, and they are the not-so-secret source for SCOM success. Um, it's all well and good having all of the cool data that SCOM has to offer, uh, but being able to visualize that data and display things uh, real time with the ability to drill down into that data is what allows uh, monitoring teams to be successful with SCOM and Squid Up enables that. Uh, and then there is Cookdown, that's the side of the world I'm from. Um, so. Uh, so we do a number of things, primarily connecting SCOM and ServiceNow to automate the process of creating incidents uh, in ServiceNow, as well as populating the ServiceNow CMDB with all of the cool object data uh, from MPs like the M365 MP in ServiceNow, as well as service mapping. Uh, we have free solutions to solve alert tuning in the form of EasyTune, uh, which will let you tune an entire management pack in a single click, and a whole bunch of other free SCOM essentials, free MPs essentially, that, that uh, help with common uh, SCOM problems essentially, like uh, allowing you to author custom monitoring using PowerShell and monitor uh, ServiceNow, and many other bits and pieces too. So before we dig back into questions, just to say next time, um, we will be with Christian Heitkamp from NICE, and he's going to be taking us through authoring management packs and monitoring uh, Linux using fragments, and that's on the 27th of April, at the same time as this one, and all the details are on the uh, Coffee Break website. And another plug for something that's going on in the future, so Scomathon 2021. So Scomathon, uh, um, the actual conference, is back for another year. Uh, full details to be released really, really soon, like in the next week soon, uh, along with full agenda. But this year we're back with two days worth of content, so it'll be bigger and better than ever before. All the details, when they're available, will be at scomathon.com. Um, so, I'm going to uh, now go through all of the questions because there are still loads of unanswered questions and I want to make sure we, we get through as many of them as we can. Ooh, where to go with the questions first? Uh, let's see. Um, we have, we have, I've answered some of these already. Is there any talk about adding Dynamics 365 to the uh, M365 MP? Uh, a cache. That's are you are you uh, muted? I'm sorry. Yeah, that that's a very uh, uh, interesting question. That was something which was on my mind a couple of weeks ago as well. The only question is, do we have an equivalent demand as that we have had for uh, M365? Uh, if if you have uh, customers asking for m 365 I would request them to raise a request on our system uh, on our SCOM uh, user voice. Uh, whose link I'm going to share it on, on, on the Slack channel. Uh, the more number of votes, that will help us prioritize the, uh, you know, the, the management pack. Mm. Just a just a general thing on user voice. I think it's really worth just everybody keeping an eye on user voice. If there are any sort of feature requests there are out there, or to have your vote on an existing feature request, it's really worth keeping an eye on user voice. Um, next question. Uh, is this uh, a free MP? Any support provided provided by the SCOM support team? Yes, it would be. This management pack is created by Microsoft, but created and branded by, by Microsoft. So this would be free and uh, and, and uh, supported by Microsoft. Yes. Perfect. Music to everyone's ears. Uh, does the MP come with its own classes and objects to add to distributed applications? Yes. It does. Perfect. Uh, using the Office 365 supplemental MPV2, can, uh, one can only add to the whole node. Not sure I understand that piece of the question. Does it make sense to you, Cash, or do we need extra information? I'm sorry, where are these? Okay, they are there in the chat window, is it? Okay. They're in, yeah, they're in the GoToWebinar chat. There are quite a few. I've tried to sort of type the answers if you, as you said them, but as you can see, there are quite a few in there. <laughs> How do I make them big? Okay, I got it. I'm taking a look at it right now. Okay, I was wondering where you're reading it from. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. There is obviously Slack as well. Um, so yeah, okay. So the next one, uh, isn't user voice being deprecated? 
uh, that's a good question. Yes, user voice is being deprecated, but feel free to go ahead and create one. Uh, we will, uh, you know, we will transition out of user voice at, at, at a very slow pace. But as of now, that is our go-to place for any feedback. Good stuff. Uh, what else do we have? Do, do, do. Uh, somebody needs more information about SCOM and ServiceNow connectivity. Uh, send me an email. I'll send you everything you need on that one separately. Um, what have we got? Uh, during the setup process, are tests really being performed from the identified watcher nodes or from the management server which the console is connected to? That would be from the management. Uh, sorry, that would be from the watcher node. From the watcher node. I'm going to type the answers as we go, so we we have them uh, before we end the webinar. Um, sure. Is only is there only is, can you only assign one type of license per watcher node? Yes. Yes. Okay. There are lots of questions. Uh, we use 19 different paid for license SKUs. Uh, here it's squared up. This is from Adam. Uh, using 19 different watches seems overkill. Are there any plans to make uh, license monitoring more universal, i.e., not SKU specific? Uh, as I said, we will plan to uh, you know, provide the option of uh, monitoring multiple SKUs from watch, one watch node in the next version of the management pack. Mm -hmm. Sounds good in the future. What else do we have? Uh, are you planning to add audio and video synthetic monitoring for teams? Uh, no plans as of now, but yes, we will take that as a uh, feedback. Sounds good. Again, another one for user voice. Uh, oh, um, so we asked earlier about the use of VIP mailbox monitoring. Um, Stephen here says that would be really useful for sort of contacts at company type email addresses. So there's generic ones rather than individuals mail individuals mailboxes. Um, monitoring teams. Well, will, there, will, will there be monitoring for Teams apps as well, like Planner or Forms? Uh, again, that would not be in our roadmap for now. But yes, feedback will be taken, or rather, we are uh, noting it down. Another one for user voice. Uh, do you have a plan to include the email round trip tests to outside of the organization? Do I include the main round trip tests? Uh, you mean to say outside of the organization? I mean, I'm not seeing the, the need of it. It would be more of uh, the major use of any exchange emails in an organization is within, but yeah, let, let's, uh, I'll, I'll note that down. As yeah, I'm not sure I fully understand the question and the, the person who asked it um, has left, so I can't get clar clarity on that one. Uh, are reports available with the M365MP? Uh, not yet, not yet. That's a good question, uh, or rather that, that's a good feedback. Mm, that is, w will that be something we, we may be able to see in a future version? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Makes sense. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, will the recording be shared? Yes, the recording will be shared. If you're registered for this coffee break, you will get uh, get the uh, the recording when it's been edited and whatnot. Uh, let's see. Uh, are the M365 services discovered as objects in SCOM with health state applied to them? Could, could you repeat that? I don't see that question. Sure. There's, there's quite a few. Uh, are the M365 services discovered as objects in SCOM with a health state applied to them is the question. Yes, yes, that's the yes. difference. That's good. I think you answered that one kind of um, uh, earlier. When is the release expected uh, in the next few months, you said earlier? A couple of months, uh, probably April and uh, hopefully end of April or, or sooner. Sounds good. Let's see, am I missing any? There's so many in here. It's great to see this level of engagement. Uh, I've already answered that one. Mm -hmm. Let's see, are there any more I've missed? Uh, it's good to have this many questions to pick over. It's good to see the community is really engaged with this as a topic. Uh, all right, that's all the questions from the GoTo webinar. Let me just check Slack quickly. And by the way, anyone who's still connected, if there are questions we haven't answered or anything that springs to mind sort of after this session is over, feel free to put them in Slack because um, you'll be able to get them answered afterwards. 
So um, the next one is uh, can't anyone sign uh, sign in as a beta uh, for the MP? Is there a beta program running for the MP? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do have, and hence I've uh, you know put the uh, you know put a chat. A slack on on the slack saying that if you guys are interested please do write me at uh, system center feedback at microsoft.com okay perfect uh, that was system center feedback at microsoft.com yeah perfect okay let's see oh i just that's from you uh and then the final question which i see you've answered but for everyone's benefit who's listening uh, can we pull two or more servers as a watcher node if not uh, what if the watcher node is down yeah, I think so. I've answered that. Yeah. And so what was the answer just for people who aren't on the Slack's benefit? I mentioned that, you know, the watch node, one, uh, I mean, watch node can be set up on an agent only. So if the agent is down, that means it, it's a completely a different issue than M365 monitoring. Right. I guess it's the same as setting up any any watcher for any purpose. You know, if you're looking for redundancy, you, you set up multiple uh, multiple watches to give you that, essentially. It makes sense. I think that's all of the questions. There are a lot of them there. And if I've missed uh, your question, my apologies, uh, please do ask it in the Slack after this coffee break and we'll make sure we get you an answer. So all that's left to do is to say thank you to your cash for um, today's session. It's been really, really awesome to see the MP, really significant improvements on the, the original Office 365 MP um, in, in many, many, many ways. Um, and thank you to everybody for listening and for watching and for all the really, really great questions. It's great to see uh, such great uh, engagement with this topic from the community all right so let's leave it there thank you very much until next time thank you thank you everyone bye-bye